Welcome back. With the spirit of show must go on. Now, I would like to invite Professor M. B. Bera from Sant Longoval Institute of Engineering and Technology, Longoval, for delivering the evening lecture. However, before I invite him to the podium, I would like to request Dr. S. K. Majumda sir to introduce him to the audience. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the last session of today, that is uh, evening lecture. And uh, uh, the lecture will be delivered by Professor M. B. Bera, who is from Longwal Institute of Science and Engineering, uh, which is in Longwal near in Punjab. So this talk will be uh, a bit you know, diversion from what the life science people do, we, the biologists do. So, but related to that, and very important field he works in, that is food. So let me tell a few words about him before I invite him for the lecture. Professor Manav Bandhu Bera got his uh, honors degree from the Jaharlal Nehru Krishi Vishwavidyalaya, that is JNKVB Jabalpur, and postgraduate in food technology from the Central Food Technology Research Institute, that is CFTRI Mysore. He obtained his PhD, or he did his PhD from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. He also earned a PG certificate food technology uh, as a Masa Fellow from the Hebrew University, Jerusalem, Israel. He served as the assistant professor, as an assistant professor of food science and technology at JNKVB Jabalpur from 1980 to 2000, and taught both UG and PG courses in food science and technology, besides carrying out research in bioconversion of food and food engineering. He became professor and head in 2000 of central uh, uh, central government funded institute that is uh, Sant Langwal Institute of Engineering and Technology and it is a deemed to be university. He's, uh, he has been principal investigator or co-investigator of a of many sponsored projects from DBT, AICT and CSIR. He has supervised 20 MTech, 10 MSc, 13 PhD and two postdoc students in food engineering and technology. He's Major area, principal area of research interest is food physics and application of nanotechnology in food. He has over 110 research papers in peer reviewed journals, and he has published a book where he is a co author. Uh, the book is entitled, uh, entitled Experiments in Food Process Engineering, and another is Food Storage Engineering which has been accepted for publication by Apple Academic CRC publication, Florida, USA. He has uh, presented many a paper, both home and abroad. He has been thesis examiner, PhD thesis examiner from various universities and reviewer of various journals. He is a life member of AFSTI and ISTE. And he had hold various administrative positions that is Dean Research and Development, Dean Planning and Development, Dean Academic, and Dean Student and Faculty Welfare from 2002 to 2017. And he was officer on special duty at NIT Dur uh, Durgapur for the establishment of GKCIET at Malda, West Bengal. And uh, his list of contributions is uh, very long, so I will not read all the things. So with this brief introduction, I invite Professor Beda to deliver today's evening lecture.
Thank you, uh, Dr. Mojumdar, for my introduction. And good evening, everybody, respected director of this institute, organizer of this mega event. And for the outset, I want to thanks for inviting me for giving a lecture, invited lecture on my subject of specialization. I'll give double thank to Dr. Majumdar for giving me an opportunity to revisit again the life science, which I might have forgotten for a long time because my area of his specialization is a little different. Thank you for that. Future indicator for ranking of any country will not be based on simply GDP or per capita income of the citizen, but it will be based on the wellness factor. You may be very happy that India stood fifth in the world ranking in terms of GDP. But you just introspect yourself. Are you happy? Are you well? You are healthy? Just ask yourself. Most of us will say, no, we are not that healthy, you know. We have got some 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 problems, you know, something like that. Sorry. We have some problems. Because productivity of human capital is directly related to food and nutritional status of every citizen of that country. How well they are fed, how nice they are fed, how nutritionally they are fed. If they are healthy, they will contribute to the productivity of that particular country. Vision for 2050, the world population would be 9 billion. 8.5 billion population would be from the developing country like us. Therefore, the econo national economy would be linked with the food and nutritional and environmental security that is prime than anything else. And since the population is increasing, but in relation to the population, the productivity is not that increasing in terms of the food productions. Just if you see here that 2011 to 2012, the food grain production was 265 million tons. If I have to fit so much of population by 2023, I have to increase the food production by 42%. Therefore, I have listed how much food production you need to increase in order to feed the hunger population of the It is only possible if you have a very good agriculture practices, which is now we call the precision agriculture that's coming up now. We are going to start with a program in precision agriculture in my university again. So, or you have to utilize the agro processing waste. And also you have to think about the post harvest losses that is in the order of 20 to 30%. It's a huge loss that we have to work on it. But that is a one aspect of overall scenario of food production in India. Then another very interesting things, you know, that worldwide chronic disease will cause $17.3 trillion of cumulative economic loss between 2011 to 2030 from healthcare expenditure reduced and that reduces the productivity and losses. We never knew that Corona is going to stuck us. Nobody has speculated. 
and that has really really created lot of financial losses to all the country we never knew it that is what is near about 17.3 trillion dollar terms the production then what we need actually today's our so called health system are in fact 90% illness system they spend almost all their resources on treating the problem relating to lifestyle diseases in future the industry won to be part of the solution not the problem creator we want to we want to give some solution not to create a problem that is a lifestyle disease that's what we call it okay then what we need we have the things that pharma industry has to again redesign their portfolio come out with the products which would help in preventing not treating the illness you might have seen in the tv ad you know kya aapke isme dha hai right this is a kind of marketing i still how much dha is going to play a role is a big question but it is a marketing gimmick okay then the adult you need to have metabolic function kind of the food products you're going to design it how it's going to help metabolic function that that needs to be seen that i'm going to discuss about that then immune intestinal function especially the older or the gargetic patients older populations they need that therefore you have got all sections and also demography of the particular country also decide the kind of food products they are going to design india is a is a is a populations that's what we call it we call it young populations average age is let's say 25 to 30 within that the kind of the food products we are going to design for india is entirely going to be different than the population of europe there the population is old populations so the kind of food products they are going to design for europe is entirely different than in in country like in india where the average population is young population that is what we call demographic dividend for us they can contribute a lot of productivity for nation building there is a emerging trends that change has been trend has been shifted you know in terms of the food product design if you see the the first slide this side for to form earlier whatever the industries used to prepare they used to dump into market you have no choice you eat that's it now we know what is to be good what is to be eaten what is what not to be eaten you know we know what is what should be the taste what should be the pleasure of eating things so there is a there is a axis of the convenience safety and pleasure that talks about the brain brain has to tell whether you are satisfied with the particular food or not then your gut health nutrients bioavailability these are the some of the factors all the things if they put it you are going to design a food products earlier it was not like this you have purchased the grain you have you have milled it you have packed it you have you have given to uh, the consumer to eat no other way now you have got so many things in your portfolio you can design different kind of food you can give it to the consumer let the consumer decide what they want it is a, it is a kind of bottom up approach than anything else okay 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 yeah yeah it's a bottom up approach you know what the consumer wants earlier it is what it was not like that what the industries is preparing they are dumping into the market now the consumer decides what i want you give it to us otherwise you cannot sell the products things are now different therefore designing of food products depends upon understanding
is okay. Therefore, designing of food products depends upon the understanding on health and nutritional science. We have to do a little bit of data mining. Then functional, function relationship with the food components, food structure, ingredient formulations, and production processes. Health and nutritional science, both are, I would say, they are the, they are the Siamese twins. You cannot separate it out. Food and health, they go side by side. Okay? So we will see a little bit of nutritional science uh, data, you know. I thought that I should must tell you because there are a lot many WhatsApp university comes. They dump, keep on dumping some, some different kind of knowledge. And I thought as a food technologist, I must tell you what is right, what is to be, you know, seen or what is has to be ignored okay then functional relationship with food components in food structure design you know it is similar to designing of this house for house designing what you need you need a cement you need a, some some kind of materials that's what we say food material any substances which are used for construction is known as construction and fabrication is known as a material so here we fabricate the food. Our fabricating components are protein, fat, carbohydrate, and a plasticizer water. Similar to cement, bricks, and you have got a uh, iron rods and other things. And you have got a prefabricated uh, things that you require in constructing house. That is your window and the, what you call the doors. We have also prefabricated things like lysithins, many additives, and we fabricate a kind of food products and we design it what we are going to de uh, design a product. Based on their properties, we have also many, you know, glue materials, many sticky materials. Those glue materials and sticky materials are based on the different kind of uh, charges, right? different kind of forces whether it is a wonderwall forces or covalent bonds and so on and so forth okay so okay health and nutrition science data mining if i go then the modernization of agriculture food processing and food formulation disease related nutrition deficiency rapidly receded all over the world now nobody nobody is bothered to go to doctor to consult if he is a anemia. Hey, you are anemia, take the iron. Okay, you are gotter, take the iodine. So it has already proved beyond doubt. We don't need any more evidences into it. Placebos are well accepted well prescribed all over the world nobody is talking about the vitamin or that matter you know uh, nutrients uh, micronutrients deficiency and also and so forth nobody bothers about it but in 1981 dietary guidelines of chronic disease was put forward in usa especially for the chd cancer diabetes arthritis and bp first guideline it was given by the usa that time because they saw there is a some kind of relationship with the this diseases and the food so they have come out with the dietary guidelines what is to be eaten what is not to be eaten how much to be eaten like that but and they kept on improvising it year after year based on the evidences and research Understanding of diet, chronic disease, and prevalent metabolic pathways have been perfected. We know everything about all those diseases, you know, blood pressures, you know, the Ranin state and all those things. Then uh, today morning, I was just, somebody was talking about the ACE in, uh, inhibitors and all those things. Then glucose, insulin, uh, diabetes, uh, role of fast engagement, flips and flop. Everybody we know, interleukin-3, interleukin-5, and all those things, we know it. All the pathways, we know it. Then 
lipid fat synthesis, triglyceride, cholesterol synthesis, all those things we know in a very, very detailed blood lipid, lipid uh, uh, proteins. I don't think all those things are, we know each and every details, their physiology, biochemistry, and all those things. Now morning, the, in the, uh, the first sessions, they have come even up to genetical, uh, you know, marking, you know, because a lot of work is going on diet gene interactions. They say it's not far off, maybe, maybe coming 20, 20 years when the bacha will born, you know, they will simply take the blood and go for other southern or western blotting methods, take out the complete, uh, you know, German, uh, your genomic sequences, put into a small cart like this, and they will go to doctor. Doctor will never use the stretho, the card they will put in the card reader, and they will see where is the genetical aberration is. If they found that particular gene code is meant for amylase, that is aberrated. That means that bacha is not able to digest starch. So they will give a kind of a personalized medicine, personalized food, you know. So that bacha can survive on that particular food products. Okay. That is a things of future. Then nutrition and illness, a little bit I'm, I'm trying to give you some pictures on the nutrition level, you know. Behavioral health and nutrition has a very, very close linkage. We have a lot of data, you know, that mood or behavior of ill-fated persons. But we don't have any research, any data about the behavior pattern of well-fed persons. But we know what causes the migraine headache. We also know that what to eat, why the tryptophans are required for the synthesis of serotonins, and so that you will get less aggressive, feel good, right? So we know all those things. But all those hypotheses, when they, when we have done in a cohort studies and they all fail to prove it. But on the other hand, when we have fed a person with a lot of carbohydrate like rice and other things, they feel more calmness and less aggressiveness. But on the contrary, the person who, who eats more of sucrose or sugars are very, very aggressive. So there is a, some sort of relationship with this, this uh, I mean, components with behavioral change, especially in the children and the kids. They are, they scream, they have the, you know, what that is what called attention deficiency syndromes, ADS, all the time. ADS has been linked with the kind of, you know, additives you are adding into food products, especially the preservatives. Those preservatives are known to uh, cause ADS and other things. So. This gives a little bit of information for us how to formulate a food products for that. Then nutrition and heart disease. Arthrosclerosis and diet, everybody have a more than me idea about it. But nevertheless, I will tell a very interesting things here. Everybody talks about cholesterol, bargya, cholesterol, bargya. Talk about the cholesterol and made the cholesterol as a villain. Like Sakti Kapoor. It's not. It's not. It is the kind of saturated fat you are eating that that determines uh, the your uh, your your uh, incidence of getting a CSD. It is the ratio of steric to palmitic that decide, not the cholesterol, dietary cholesterols. That one has to be very very. Uh, it, it is clearly it has been shown. Even I have gone through through the Faringham studies for. It took so much time to come out with the, the recommendations and all those things. Then, if you have if you have a dairy products, and they say dairy products are, has a lot of you know triglycerides and cholesterol and all those things. Why don't you start a products? You know, culture a dairy culture starter culture having 
cholesterol oxidizing enzymes into it. Remove the cholesterol, use it. Okay. Then omega-3 fatty acid, EPA, DHA, fish oil. See, these are all things has come into the lot many papers, lot many uh, you you have seen. But the only problem is this, you know, the Indian way of preparations. Where most of the food product uh, oils which we are using it, we go for frying and all those things. And this omega-3 fatty acid is highly oxidizing. So how you are going to preserve it when you are frying it? That's my question. Okay. We'll see some more. The 6 gram of omega-3 fatty acids reduces the triglycerides but do not alter the serum cholesterol that is the same LDLs to LDLs, it will remain the same. And increase in thromboxin 3, that is, uh, you know, uh, good, I would say, thromboxin, they say it is a harmless uh, thromboxin 3 that helps in a, you know, removing the platelets and all those things. That is what I was telling to you. See, one interesting uh, research that came from the uh, Jap uh, Japanese researchers, they fed 14 grams per day fees for 20 years and they found that the level of cholesterol level of that cholesterol and all the you know lipid profiles were correct as per the standard okay 14 grams per day fees for 20 years who eats 14 grams per day fees for 20 years continuously, then it will go to 6 grams, it will come into that your blood plasma. And all. So it is like that, but research is research. Then omega-3 fatty acid is highly oxidizing. The question how to use them in food preparation, especially Indian food style of cooking, oils are used for frying. Research direction is micro nano encapsulations. You go and you can encapsulate this omega-3 fatty acids that is that perhaps that is going to give you one answer and also you can go for 3d or 4d printings uh, now the food everybody is now talking about the 4d 4d printings because it 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 includes the senses and all so that is also uh, techniques because now oleo gels has come into the pictures we are preparing a lot of oleo gels that's that reduces the oils and that can work in a low temperature also Especially oligels is good in 3D printings. You can use that one. Then these insoluble fibers and soluble fibers, you can see a lot of product has come. Brown bread. How much brown they add it? They don't add it. They add only color. Just read that in the there. Uh, 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 brands emulsion supplement something like they write it you know okay but if you go to usa if you go for that kind of bread there is a three star four star five star six star like that stars is there stars means how much grams of bran they have added into it okay so this insoluble bran it only acts gives you a bulking agent okay so emptying time is very short gastric emptying time is very short so carcinogens will no longer get a time to rest jolly well enjoy in your stomach for some time they will come out so there is a dilution of the carcinogens which might have produced due to some metabolic activity and all similarly in soluble fibers obviously they are they the soluble fibers they help in reducing the cholesterol because after all, cholesterol is being produced. That has to be emulsified by LCAT or ACAT, whatever the uh, you know pathways that you know it. So you need a bile acid and bile salts. So this uh, soluble fibers, they bind with it. So cholesterol is no longer available for emulsification. So they will split it out. So it is better that you should have a lot of soluble fibers into it. Then comes the the starchy food now everybody is talks about the has high amylose starch this high amylose starch has 
uh, I mean, glycemic index uh, uh, index is very very low in that way, and it has a more of resistance starch. You can see in the uh, uh, glycine. Uh, uh, okay, next it will have a next. Okay, resistance starch is a starch which is not easily digestible by the intestinal enzymes. Okay because due to their complex structure they are they 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 will be there you know it takes long time to get it you know digested and resistant starch you will get it in a parboiled rice but if you go for raw rice resistant starch is not there okay or you can make resistant starch your own if you cook the rice put it like that let it cool it for some time don't eat after reheating just eat only the thanda chawal it has a resistant starch because starch amyloids and amylopectins are there when you heat it they have already they have you know uh, already crystalline phase to rubbery stage already they have changed you know and when you are cooling it there is a retrogradation it will come back so that is good for the uh, the the uh, you know especially for the diabetic persons okay then meat, cardiometabolic effect of saturated fat and dietary cholesterol are neutrals. There is no evidence. So I think uh, Dr. Goes is happy with that. Anyway, then preserved meat, sodium level, and CBD and BP positive correlations because they had a lot of, uh, we used a lot of, you know, uh, curing agents and all those things. So if you take the processed food, uh, you know, meat, there is every chance that BP may increase. Then consumption of meat and the incidence of diabetic mellitus positive correlations are there. So those who have a diabetes, they should be careful about eating of meat. Okay. A consumption and incidence of CBD in general has no evidence. Okay. Higher consumption of egg lower the risk of hemorrhagic strokes. Protect effect the dietary cholesterol on vascular fragility because vascular fragility they, 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 it will rupture faster if it is a fluid fluidity is there it will expand so it help in expanding it okay consumption poultry and incident of diabetic mellitus is a mixed response there is no evidence okay fees milk cardiometabolic health you know fees omega-3 consumption and uh, it remains unclear clear. the eskimo of icelanders what they eat they eat only and only fat and there was survey was conducted just to see how many persons in particular neighborhood suffering from csd not a single they eat only only and only fat that to reindeer meat and their feet but they don't have csd they eat the sea fees that is the frozen fees those are there and they have a lot of omega-3 fatty acid that was one of the reasons they have given to us then fish oil has a uncertainty there are many you know advertisement are there eat you know fish oil it will make your you know lipo lipid profile you know correct but it will make other way around if you are healthy individuals your lipid profile is good don't eat it don't take it it is only possible those person who are suffering from dyslipidemia in that case this is okay then cardio metabolic effect of different dairy products presents a major unanswered question of the modern nutritional science full fat okay or full low fat milk there is always you can see in the WhatsApp, full fat nikha lena, low fat low, skim milk low. Kyo low? Why? Fat has a milk fat has a lot of good good things in it into it. You require that one. In cohort study, using objective birth marker, greater dairy fat consumption is associated with a lower incidence of diabetic mellitus and CSD. 
little evidence that supports low fat dairy products superior to health of the risk of the obesity there is no evidence these are these all i have collected lot many papers i have gone through all those papers then i have compiled it then i am talking here vegetable oil and cardio metabolic health another hawa bana ke rakh diya just see in the tv don't use refined oil there will be big debate in the tv use only kachchi ghani oil fine even some doctors will be there to support their claims okay maybe big kachchi ghani oil is good i i i don't say no but the raw materials what kind of raw materials you are using it are you using mustards which are cultivated under the strict organic conditions no your mustard is already loaded with lot many fungicide and pesticides all these all pesticides are fat soluble so when you are doing kachchi ghani that all pesticide comes with the oil and we and you use jolly well those oil and enjoy the fried items right but when we go for refining process you know all those things go off and we add all the lost vitamins other things which have been lost during the refining we add it from that as a compensations and all those things okay i am not here to advocate the refined oil or that matter i am not disowning the kachchi ghani it is you to decide which is right allergens are lost during chemical refining now there are lot many techniques has come bioprocessing has come that bioprocessing helps us to where you are using lot of enzymes and you are refining it that is known as a bio refining process then bioactive components of food and nutraceutical and cancer today i have seen lot many you know posters related with the cancer 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 i was really introspecting where i have come okay and all those things all those things inhibitor of carcinogens anti initiating and blocking agents anti promotion these are all the six theory that has given you know anti promotion anti uh, progressions or suppressing agents many t polyphenols epigenins they are all are given there you know they are claim they they are good against the cancer there are claims one of the greatest claim is from the green tea okay if you take a green tea full of antioxidant you will not get any cancer and all those things but how much you take green tea do you take how many how many cups they say if you take 20 cups minimum 20 cups of green tea then in the blood plasma 5 deciliter of that concentration will there and that will give a effect you and i we don't take 20 cup of green tea and it has become a you know kind of this status symbol visit any office what you will take you will take a green tea or you will take the dood wali chai green tea chalega green tea chalega status wala aadmi hai so this is how the marketing gimmick has gone into it absolutely there is a no no evidences okay and you and i we don't drink it so don't fall prey into their marketing gimmick you know oh sorry no conclusive evidence are there about this claims you know all biomolecules whether you extract from anywhere you know they have a some kind of nutraceuticals they have all nutraceuticals you will get a very good results in a you know animal trials very good results but they all fail 
in a human trials. Because the evidences, the reports, the data which you get it from the animal data, animal you know, experiment data, that cannot be correlated, linearly correlated with the human data. Cannot be. It's a different thing, it's all game together. So therefore, if you claim it that it has shown effect in a animal studies, and so I expect it is going to show the same result in the human studies, no. If you want to claim it, you have to claim with the clinical evidences, with the at a molecular level, with the biomarkers and all those things. This is the reason why now a lot of research is going on to search for suitable biomarkers in the human body. So that will help you to give the exact results. Until then, cross the finger. See, failure or concepts, two wonderful failure or concepts was there in 90s, you know, 1992, 1994, something like that. ATABC, that is alpha tocopherol, beta carotene. They say both are uh, both are antioxidant. They said if you give alpha tocopherols and beta carotene supplement, it will prevent your lung cancer. They have a trial with the 20,000 volunteers. They found it reversed. The placebo who didn't receive this one, their mortality rate was less than those who received the placebo of AT, uh, ATBC. That is the failure of the concept. Our concept is telling that antioxidant, if you take, it will take care of ROS, RNAs, and all those things. That's what we say. But in the reality, when it is done in the 20,000 volunteers, it was reversed. Similarly, the your carat, that is also carotene and uh, uh, retinol punched together and given to the beta carotenes and the retinols. Studies were there for the prostate cancers. And that included both the smokers, non-smokers, uh, I mean, ladies and gents. Here also, they found the uh, same effects, you know. Interesting was, this alpha tocopherols, when they took it, there is a level of alpha tocopherol to gamma tocopherols in our body. So when they take more of alpha tocopherol, the ratio was disturbed. And that is the reason why there is a more mortality. So there is a, one have to think into it. Yeah. Not coming? Oh. Then what are the take on for the food industries and how to move ahead? Huh? Okay. Major challenge before the food processor industry is how do we formulate the food that contains correct ratio of nutrition? Sensory satisfies sensory attributes, novelty, cost effect capture the major share of the market that is the philosophy of the food industries you know designing of food products involved creative idea derived from the understanding interface between food process technology and nutrition science and we call food technology is a function of bt mt and it bt is a biotechnology mt is a material science it is information technology if we all punch three together then only we can have a good food technology. I can, this is the future. There is structural design engineering of food products. That's what I'm going to speak now. That is the, why, what, that's what we call new food product design. Research work on designing of novel food products in my lab, it was done, you know, development of, uh, Actually, uh, the, we did, you know, application of free volume concept in designing of functional food containing a biotic molecules. That was our projects, you know. Generally, you know, in food products development, you know, what we do, we take any base, we add something 10%, 20%, 15%, blend it, and then go for sensitive evaluation, characterization, texture, and all those things. If I ask somebody, 
how could you get 10%, 20%, 15% data? आपको किसने बताया है इसमें 15% डाल दो 20% डाल दो 50% डाल दो He will say that I have seen the paper of Dr. Majundar. He has used 10, 15, and 20. Then I ask Majundar, well, Professor Majundar, आपको कहाँ से मिला 15, 20, 25? Majundar will say, I have seen the paper of Dr. Ghosh. Dr. Ghosh, could you tell me how did you get this one? Man, this is my experience. In science, doesn't rely on experience. It needs evidence only. It needs only evidence. Right? And what we do? We do some optimization technique. The sur surface response methodology, RSM, where we do a lot of factorial design. We go for ANN. We go for Gaussian process. And these all techniques, optimization techniques, are falls within the boundary conditions. If your requirement is above the boundary condition, what you will do? The, you will get an empirical equation out of this. That is empirical equation, not the real equations. That is the reason it has R square value. Right? So if you fall, if you want to do it, process it beyond that, what you will do? That is the question. Now, a new set of thought process is going on. The first thought process was gone. It has come to the Max Muller University there in Germany and few labs in Netherlands. They say we will go for physics based optimizations. That's what they say physics based optimizations, which will be based on real equations and go for optimizations techniques. So we started doing that one as a challenge. You know. Because our work, our department is working, is a, uh, we have got a small food physics lab, that is what we call it. From there, we got it that they say, Dr. Saab, they say food is a soft condensed materials having taste. Because all food materials, particles, all comes under mesospheres. They are all if you take the particle size, that comes from from one micrometers. You talk about the emulsions, you talk about the gels, you talk about the foams, all comes under the soft condensed materials, right? All therefore, all the principles which applied in soft condensed materials and polymer science, because the food is again it has a biopolymers. You have got a fat, protein, carbon, they are all biopolymers. So all the concepts which you are using there, you can use it here. So we try to do it. And we took it a challenge since United Nations had declared 2023 20, is a millet years. And Madhya Pradesh is a blessed with the state which produce finest millets, you know, Kodo and Kutki. So we have chosen the Kutki, that small millets or minor millets, that is uh, Penicum, Sumeritans. This is a gluten-free has high amylase starch, then high richness starch, rich source of dietary fibers. Consumption of Diaz Kutki millets has increased, recommended for diabetics. Use of Kutki millet starch in novel food products development yet to be seen, including its application in development of hydrogels for nutraceutical delivery. That was our aim. We have a lot of Diaz Kutki you will get in the market but we don't want to go that route we wanted to develop a hydrogels that hydrogels will act as a delivery of biomolecules that was our uh, main idea so to to do a hydro uh, you know hydrogels you know gels you need to have a many many uh, uh, data you required you know you, you can see and we try to compare it with the corn starch, which corn starch is the most uh, common starch used in everybody's every household. You know, so we wanted to compare the corn starch and the kutki starch, whether we can use as an alternative. I am not, I am not telling that we should replace it. No, 
let it be there can be used as an alternative to that so you can see the corn starch has a resistance starch of 25.92 percent and kutki millet starch has a 29.8 it's pretty good it has a more of a uh, resistance starch then all the starch you know they don't have a good property to make a gel they don't have any starch you take they don't have a good property to make a gel so you have got to modify the starch the usual process of modification of starch is a chemical roots you know where they use lot many chemicals so we thought that we will not use the those uh, harsh chemicals like ethrification all those thing you know so we will go for some green root you know. so we have used some amino acid to cross link it okay so we took aspartic acid threonine and lysine and in deep varying ph level we try to see which one gives the good you know you know modified starch having good cross linking having a good textural properties because when you are going to have a hydrogels it should have a strength to withhold water otherwise it will collapse okay you might have seen in at your homes when you make a jelly iska jelly any jelly you make it in, at homes if there is a little bit of change in the ph you get a whipping jelly pani pani wala ho jata hai why because this ph in fact they regulate the diameter of three dimensional structure of the pectin into it if diameter is is more it will have a less space to hold water if diameter is less it will hold more water into it so this mass size or all those things are very very important so after making all those thing we did a some same analysis you can see lysine at ph 9 gave a beautiful structure you can see it has a very good uh, pore size and other thing compared to others are not that uniform except the lysine 9 so we have chosen the lysine 9 as our candidate modified candidate to study further this is the uh, optimized gel then we run a lot many experiment to optimize the process parameters of 9 uh you know lysines with different ionic strength different uh, starch concentration and all those thing finally we got is some optimum solutions and that gives the f1 f that that this one is the better structure you know so we again further we studied it and we tried to make a gel and we studied swelling as well as shrinking behavior swelling as well as shrinking behaviors we have done in conventional drying and we have done some freeze drying and conventional drying in conventional drying we did 5 degree to 50 degree centigrade with a with a uh, kind of a thought that indian subcontinent temperature goes as low as 5 degree most of the place as and high as 50 degree centigrade let us have that drying temperature and then we studied the thermodynamics of gel swelling effect of temperature of networking uh, then parameter uh, network parameters of dried hydrogels network structure or uh, parameters the most important parameter used to characterize the network structures are polymer volume fractions in the solemn state molecular weight of the polymer chain between the two neighboring cross linkages that is mc cross link density and corresponding mass size you can see here this is the uh, your your the molecular weight of neighboring molecules then this is the space that is the mass size with these all equations you know we try to calculate all those things to come at a finally our our main emphasis as the you know story will unfold final target is i want that free space where i can insert my desired concentration of molecule that was my interest 
so these are the some of the you know thermodynamics all all those data you know uh, polymer volumes the flory hagens interactions xi parameters then molecular weight between two cross link cross link density mass size we have all you can see here as the temperature is increasing you know that the the polymer fraction is decreasing okay and the flory hagens interactions we if we say if it is a less than 5 there will be miscibility means the polymers and water will mix together so they will not form a gel we want to make a uh, gel so the flory hagens parameter should be positive and it should be not less than 5 okay so network parameters of uh, Then effective diffusion coefficient parameter, all those things we have calculated it, effective diffusions, then activation energy and all those things we have, because this, these all data are required finally. So I thought that one by one slide I am going to give you. This is the thermodynamics properties of CSD, means this is a conventional drying, dried hydrogels and freeze dried hydrogels, okay. So this is XH. That's a, that is the enthalpy factors. Then you have the entropy factors, okay? So you can see all those data, all those data we, that we have collected. This all data we are going to compute in the last. So if I, if I would have gone straight away there, you would have not understood what is going on here. You know? Okay. Our main structuring process is here. If you see, this is the this is the structure, and we want to insert the nutraceutical in this mass okay how many molecules of those nutraceutical that we are going to insert into the mass that is what we are looking for volume occupied by hard spheres excluded volumes and free volume in the excluded volume no molecules can be inserted only it is in a free volumes their molecules you can insert So uh, we founded this uh, extended flory Higgins theory. We used it, you know. Actually, this extended flory Higgins uh, theory is a is a you know uh, uh, I would say offshoot of main field theory that is being used by material scientists for designing of semiconductors and all those things. Same lattice theory. Same here. It is also coming. You can see it. Determination of free volume using uh, free volume using the free volume concept. Vf is a total free volume in the gel. Vfs is the free volume per molecule of the solvent. Vfp is a free volume molecules of the polymers. If we know all those things, sum it together, then you will get a free volume. That is the main idea of this entire. Uh, 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 concept then the relation of free volume with the diffusivity and the polymers volume fraction has been given by uh, the scientist Esada. that's a dg by d by a b that is the one equation we have to plot it to find out the polymer fractions that is the value of this one this value So we we have done all those things, and this one you can say see here, uh, this one. That is the polymer volume fraction uh, in an ethanol water uh, uh, solution. That is a 80% ethanol water solutions. There we dissolve it, and we because because that is what we are using as a 
uh, as a you know solvent for the biomolecules to be dissolved in there so we took that as a uh, as a our solvent and we found that 80% ethanol is a good uh, to be used as a solvent there we found this particular value and this value is a we used it later you know you can see there's a lot of calculations are there so you you may not have a uh, much interesting into it but the one point is here that upon modeling of dg by d0 against the hydration value of parameter vfs was found to be 7.1.74 into 10 to the power minus 14 centimeters so we step by we we calculated and finally we got the value you know 32.1 mg is the concentration of the molecules that you can enter into you can enter into the systems okay and this is what we have taken gallic acid as a one of the candidate nutraceutical as a gallic acid as a one of the candidate to be loaded into the the hydrogens okay so how much we are we are going to load it it is only 32.11 mg you can load it maximum you can load it so that is the only free space you have available into hydrogens okay then what we did some help so uh, what we did uh, we did some validation of our theory okay we found that 16 mg is the maximum you can get solubilized in a methanol uh, uh, 80 percent methanol so we made a 16 percent that uh, uh, methanol and we did a absorption uh, you know uh, uh, process we dip into the hydrogel into that uh, uh, solution containing 16 percent of uh, that concentration of gallic acid and we calculated how much is left over in the beaker and how much it has absorbed by spectrophotometry and all those things we got that 30 uh, mg it could only load into the hydrogels so there we found it how much 32 it is a matter of only two gram two, uh, two milligrams difference so if we found it it is a not that much it is insignificant in the various is insignificant so that is what you know our approach is uh, uh, right validation is already tells that approach by physical methods of optimization method is correct you can go about it rather going for you know rsm and uh, ga and other things go for this method so we have published all these papers into it then i will go hurriedly since uh, i got the alarm already some work we did in, in, a, in, a, in a nanotechnology application in food and first work was you know we made a nano emulsions with the turmeric uh, extract for uh, you know preservation of fatty fish because fatty fish has a lot of problems especially in the coastal area where there is no electricity and temperatures are pretty high and relative humidity and is also high so we made a the nano emulsion turmeric based nano emulsions and we found it that it it it, it it's a, it's a good up to uh, uh, you know 96 hours 
the total plate counts was more or less it remained the same you know although it has increased but up to 96 hours there was a not much uh, you know spoilage in the fatty fees we took fungus fungus fees as a one of the candidate for this study and this already we have published this paper so otherwise the fees spoils eight times faster at a temperature of 20 then if it stores as a minus one and minus four degrees centigrade then we did some work in a uh, nano particles especially silver nano particles and nano bio conjugates okay so uh, we found uh, i will uh, wrap up you know in this uh, uh, although we could we could get a very good uh, nanoparticle silver nanoparticles with the you know uh, polyphenols especially elastine that we have extracted from the pomegranate spill and we made a silver uh, nano conjugates and we did a lot of studies is anti bacterial studies and toxicology studies and uh, vero cell line and all those things we have studied and it gave a very good result very good result i can show you this all thing uh, we found all those uh, with the uh, you know uh, the particle size we analyzed with the team as well as from the particle size analyzer of course there is a not much there is a, a lot of discrepancy if i put it the particle size you get it from team and particle size you get for uh, particle size analyzer because both principles are different i would take the teams that are much more accurate then particle size analyzer because their particles they take assumes as a spherical which is not so this is an Hamilton analysis we say we have seen that well it has a nicely uh, conjugated with that so uh, all those things and thermal studies also we have seen because we wanted to use it finally in food preparations there is a possibility to process in higher temperature whether they are going to degrade or not so thermal uh, analysis all those things stability test we have done it then antimicrobial activity also we have seen then uh, uh, we have made a bio uh, nano conjugates because i am not that much advocate of silver uh, or metal uh, nano particles for making you know uh, for its use directly into food although there are many papers are available but i don't advocate it I don't advocate it. So we have gone for making a biomaterials of uh, same elagitine. We have taken gene as a protein from the corn gene. And we have, you know, again, we have cross-linked with the lysine. Although we took three, uh, you know, amino acid. Again, here also in this particular case also we got lysine is a good candidate for making you know, uh, bioconjugate, uh, bioconjugations of elagitines. So you can see these are the some of the value, and we did some of the efficient value. All those data, because time is short, so I will go just hurriedly to wrap up. So antioxidant and functional properties are very, very important. You know, functional properties until unless I got, I get the functional properties, I cannot predict where it is going to use in the food systems. Therefore, I need to have some functional properties of those, uh, of those uh, biomaterials. Then uh, you can see the same uh, morphology. Then again, we have seen the antimicrobial uh, studies. This is the MIC. Then uh, cell viability of this thing uh, in, in a... Uh, then in the vero cell line also we have studied all those things and found it is a quite safe then we have seen against the hepatitis g2 cell cancer cells and there also we have seen that it works very nice that it remained constant i mean i mean cell doesn't grow wherever it is it is it is a it is a very good step in that way so that is also data this work we have done with the help of cancer to Tata Memorial Cancer Institute at Mumbai. Uh, we sent our one of the student, Rimpi Hozdar, to work there, and this all data from there. Then cytotaxis, again, normal and vero cell lines. So uh, you can see uh, that in all this IC50 value and all those things, it indicates that it can be used for 
making for directly you can use it incorporate in making in some food application that is what we have done it and and uh, we have also done some gastrointestinal studies you know when you ingest it you know how much is going to remain in the you know gi tract how much it is going to liberate okay so that is also data we have all the stages you know in the vasopagus you have got a you know uh, gi tract and all those things all data we have it so finally uh, we thought that we should apply it in a preparation of soup so we took it as a you know you know as a kutki flour uh, kutki uh, starch as a base materials and and we have added into it the biomaterials uh, that i'm not going to tell it how much because it's going for patent and all those things so finally uh, we could uh, make a soup that has a this bio conjugated uh, you know biomaterials especially designed for diabetic patient and uh, because we already uh, got all the toxicology studies and all those things we got it is a non toxic and all those things so we thought that we should go for this for the making of a you know um, soup especially designed for diabetic patient and all those things that was the our last uh, stage of my our work is we have published these papers best way to predict the future is to invent it that's what dalen k say and the future of the food already some of the things already talk today the first uh, uh, you know uh, dr hasan i think see so talked about the gene protein uh, gene uh, diet interaction that is the broader picture of that but a new word has come the futuristic words it is only i think 2022's verdict you know especially in the australia usa and some country they are talking about the futuristic food they say they talk about the precision fermentation i have heard only precision agriculture now they talk about the precision fermentation especially they are imitative food especially vegan milk or meat because it's milk or animal products or animals they create a lot of ozone hole you know in during their rearing and all those things so we want to discourage the you know rearing of the animal husbandry so we wanted to have a what should be the substitute for the milk that we are used from the animals so what they have done you know in the in a in a futuristic food in the precision fermentation they have inserted the genes that is coding for the synthesis of the milk fat into a into a uh, microorganisms and they have design a fermentation system in such a way that they produce that kind of a protein and when they are made they are reconstituted it gives the same flavor same texture and uh, you know same frothiness and all those things this is what the futuristic uh, uh, fermentation is all about similarly the for the meat also there are a uh, lot many research is going on thank you very much this is my institutions santlom wall institute of engineering and technology we have a 4000 students and we have a 10 ug programs 10 uh, your uh, mtech programs phd in all departments and 12 certificate and diploma program and our institution is the first in india that has a integrated programs from class 10 to class 12 before even nap 20 was you know conceived we were using it from 1989 thank you very much for patience hearing thank you so much sir now i would like to request dr rakhi sir to kindly present momento to professor mb bera
thank you sirs here concludes the day one of life sciences team meeting on the uh, behalf of organizing committee i would like to thank all of you for being with us diligently i would like to thank the chief guest professor amlan jepal dr sv nakhe sir director r r kat dr p d naik dean hvni and dr um, dr sunil ghosh associate dean life sciences hvni and dr s r mishra dean academic uh, hvni at r r kat thank you so much so uh, now it is uh, after this illuminating talk on food we it, it it really we are now uh, hungry you know that so i do not know what about the whether you will get futuristic food or not but i am sure that you will get some food and uh, after uh, uh, professor vera already told that we don't need to think too much about the cholesterol so i think the time will be very much enjoyable now okay so with this thing let us uh, now uh, join for dinner and the dinner is uh, today is the banquet dinner which has been arranged uh, uh, outside our cat and uh, it is in mohu near mohu that is a military cantonment area there is a small resort there so we will be going there for the dinner and there will be buses uh, at guest house you know that guest house and this convention center are okay so the guest house and convention centers are really nearby so it will be somewhere midway the buses will be standing and there will be yellow color buses written sri bashna vidyapeet vishwavidyalay so we will be boarding that those buses for going to the venue okay so so uh, so uh, i think that we are uh, already a little bit late so uh let us uh, make it from 8 o'clock or within 8 10 definitely we will move from here so that's all thank you <laughs>